So this week I had a plan. The plan was I would get my booster shot a few days before Christmas. I thought it would make me feel kind of terrible, but I would still be in good enough shape where I could spend the next couple of days editing a video to get it ready in time for Christmas. Sounds like a good idea, right? It wasn't. So I had a really strong reaction to my booster, where I had chills so bad I thought my body was hosting a war drama. As a result, it is now literally Christmas morning and I have nothing prepared. Okay, let's talk about Garfield. You know Garfield, right? Whether you love him or hate him, everybody knows about this fat orange cat who loves lasagna and hates Mondays. However, you couldn't be blamed for thinking that Garfield was actually nothing special. We've had a whole generation of bad takes to thank for that. But me? My relationship with Garfield is as simple as it is profound. The comics taught me how to read. So, I admit I have a soft spot for the orange furball. I mean, I can see how the quality slipped after the live-action Garfield movie, but there was a time where the only Garfield media out there, aside from the comic strip, was pure gold. It was a bunch of on-model 2D animation featuring Garfield brought to us with the dulcet tones of the late, great Lorenzo music. I'm only bringing you to the vet for a checkup. Check out, John. You're only bringing me here to check out the vet. You see, there was this show called Garfield and Friends, a great show that understood how to write a Garfield plot, better than that other show can anyway, and also for some reason included a cartoon based on Animal Farm that nobody talks about anymore for good reason. But today I want to talk about 1987's A Garfield Christmas Special, part of a trio of honestly underrated holiday specials, but this one in particular stands out to me. If I had to describe the Garfield Christmas Special in one word, it would be sincere. It's a rare breed of Christmas special that doesn't try to shoehorn in conflict for the sake of having a plot. There's no battle over that rare Christmas toy to wring out a laugh, no family fight to force drama, not even something as trite as saving Christmas. As if Christmas was something that needed saving. Remember what the moral was in How the Grinch Stole Christmas? However, while the story is about as simple as a Christmas story can get, Garfield, Odie, and John go to John's parents' house for Christmas and they have a pretty good time, it still manages to have a story, an arc, and even some character development. The centerpiece of the setting, however, is Christmas traditions. Not so much the origins of them or what they're meant to accomplish, but why we go through with them in the first place. I mean, sure, they have dinner, decorate the tree, sing songs and open presents, but the events themselves are largely glossed over in favor of the vignetting surrounding them people being together. Things like setting up the tree as a family has less to do with getting the new tree together and more to do with the fact that you did it together. Even the sillier and seemingly vestigial traditions, such as Father Arbuckle reading a book largely intended for children despite the youngest person in the room being at least in their 20s, what clearly had its origins in genuine family bonding has sort of transformed into a chance for the family to deliver some light-hearted ribbing at their parental figure. I especially love how John's mom is clearly in on the whole thing. She has this astonishing passive-aggressive streak I didn't notice the first time I watched this as a kid. Well, what do you think, Gary? That was interesting. And speaking of, Odie... Don't mind me. I'll just sit here in the dark, alone. Nobody gives a hoot about an old woman like me anyway. Okay, yeah, I can't forget about Grandma. So, when it comes to the story arc, the main character, as it should be, is Garfield. Garfield starts the special believing that the most important thing about Christmas is the presents, the material gains and the cool stuff you'll get, treating the other stuff as superfluous and pointless. He even disregards the activities John excitedly describes on the trip there as being nothing more than chores. But soon after, we meet Grandma, and she's the cool type of grandma with the denim and the Steven Universe sweatshirt and the loads of energy, but Garfield pretty quickly figures out that she's putting on a strong front to hide her melancholy, as Christmas is the time of year she most associates with her late husband. Also around this time, we see that Odie, that lovable scamp, has been sneaking out to the barn with various items around the house, and overnight, Garfield follows him out to the barn to see what he's been up to. 
Now, something I would like to mention is that in the comic adaptation of the story, made from the original storyboards, has Odie unable to finish making his contraption, and Garfield fixes it for him when he isn't looking in an act of impulsive kindness. Not sure why this was removed in the final script, but I kinda like this moment. Either way, at the end of the scene, Garfield finds a bundled pack of old letters, which I think gets us to the crux of the film, and what I think is one of the best parts. Garfield figures out the moral to the story on his own. He doesn't need a lecture about what Christmas is all about. Instead, he sees an opportunity to be kind, and he takes it. Garfield could tell that Grandma was feeling left out, and so hands over the bundle, which turns out to be love letters that she had been sent by her husband a long time ago. And as Grandma starts to read them and gets emotional, everyone is there for her. And that is the message that this special is trying to send, that the togetherness is the point. It's not so much the ceremony as it is the people you perform the ceremony with. And, to his credit, Garfield figures this out on his own. It's not the giving. It's not the getting. It's the loving. So yeah, there it is. A Christmas story without a melodramatic plot that still manages to have a story with character development. And yeah, the message, in my opinion, is spot on. Now, I say this understanding that the past few Christmases haven't been easy for anybody, but that's why it's more important to cherish the moments we have. Christmas is a time for people to get comfortable. Remember better times, even indulge in that thing people say you're too old to enjoy anymore. On Christmas, you have my permission. You also have my permission to watch this Christmas special. You can do so on YouTube right now, along with the other holiday specials, 100% official from the source. It's become a tradition of mine to watch this special every year, and I hope it becomes one of yours as well. Hope you have a safe and happy Christmas, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, this is Kodak signing off.